Hey everybody, in this video we're going to do a really quick crash course into the user interface for Unreal 5 and also just how to manipulate your windows and all that other good stuff so you can get started. Usually whenever you get into Unreal, you're going to be in some kind of either default map or starter content map or something. It honestly doesn't really matter because it always changes. Like I just made a new map over here, like file level, and then it'll ask for different types, you know, depending on if you want the basic lighting setup or whatever, you can have different starting points. But if you make a new project, it's probably going to start you off with some other objects in your level, and that's totally fine. Now this thing that I'm doing right here, let me let me talk about the basic movement inside of uh, this window, which is called the viewport. So inside of the viewport, the main ways you can move around are either the mouse controls, which is uh, hold left mouse and drag around, you'll do that. A uh, right mouse is how you can pivot your view right there, like you're looking around. Uh, and then, you know, middle mouse scroll uh, back and forth, you can do that. Another common way of moving around, which I tend to use preferably, is if you hold down the right mouse button, you can look around like this, but you can also use WASD to move around as if you're playing a first person shooter, right? This is unreal. So of course, if you press Q and E, you can move up again while holding the right mouse button. The way I think about it is if I want to move around the level, just hold down right mouse button and then just, you know, move like I'm playing a game. If you want to move faster or slower, you can while holding down the right mouse button, I do your scroll wheel. And if I turn that up or down, I turn it up you see how much more quickly i move if I turn it down like scroll down while holding right mouse button uh, i move a lot more slowly so you can kind of adjust that as you go all right so that's the viewport there's some other settings up here like uh, this is where you can set your snap settings right whether you, you want to work on the grid or not um there's some other cool stuff here too you can poke around like local or world and other things you can also change how this viewport is rendered in case you want multiple viewports for example right you can uh, create multiple viewports and you can have each one you know you could be you can see these other hotkeys here too if you like but you can customize some viewports to render certain ways right unlit or uh, wireframe or whatever you know anything you like but this is called the viewport and this is how you move around in it this is how you you know get around you can use some other hotkeys like i think it's f yeah f will frame uh, or focus and then you can you know use that to navigate your world Related to the viewport, let's talk about the outliner. And your outliner is essentially, if, you've, if you're coming from Unity, this would be the hierarchy, but it's essentially your list of objects inside of your world, right? At the very top, we have our world up here. And inside of our world, we can expand it and we can see all the things that are inside of our world, including objects that define lighting. So you might see some defaults here whenever I created a new map with some good defaults. Might be exponential height fog, directional light, whatever. All the stuff that it starts off with, you can see. The other cool thing that I like is you can create folders over here. So if we, um, you actually want to select some something first. So let's say floor, we can hit the floor first and then hit the uh, folder button. We'll see it'll create a folder and it'll group your floor inside of it. So we could call this level geo. And then we could group our objects inside of our outliner inside of folders for uh, organization. And then it's a lot nicer to work with. That's nice, we can also, you know, show and hide if we like as well. There's some hotkeys for this. If you have different objects in your level or, uh, or in your world, you can select an object, in this case it's the floor, and down here you're gonna see a panel called Details. Details is very similar to the Inspector panel inside of Unity uh, if you're coming from Unity, but it's essentially all the things related to this actor that we need to know about. Specifically, we can have other components on our actor that will show different things, so in this case, we're looking at all, we can look at different parts of this, we can look at different categories. It's gonna to default to all, but just know that you can scroll down here and see common things like transform, but also later, later on down there, because this is a type of actor, which we haven't talked about yet, we can see things like static mesh, materials, physics, how it collides with things. You just get a lot of stuff right out of the box with this. So uh, you can manipulate all this stuff, but your details panel will always show you your current selection and all the things that you can manipulate on that objects, uh, whether it's component or their root or whatever. Um, this is where you can change and manipulate this object, uh, all the details related to it. Okay, the other thing that's worth mentioning is that in order to exist inside the world, an object inside of Unreal has to be either an actor or a subset of actor. So for example, if I don't worry about this part yet, but if I were to uh, create a new class right here. I just right clicked and hit blueprint class. 
we can select what type of thing this new blueprint will be. And if we choose actor, that's kind of like the base object for anything that exists inside the world. You may see other things like pawns, which are things that, that can be controlled by either the player or AI. And you may see character, which is like the more complex, like pawn with movement, with uh, jumping, with all this other base stuff uh, and animations and things. So actor is kind of the base level object for it to exist in the world. And I think that's worth knowing because uh, if you create an actor, it'll ask for things like static mesh materials and all that other stuff. So that's why like a floor is a type of actor. And then we can create other actors that will render in different ways. So anyways, that's the details panel. This will change depending on what kind of object you select, right? Like if I select my, oh, what is this, the skylight, we can see other components might be underneath that root object. So that's worth knowing as well. And you can scroll down and change whatever you like. There is a lot of options to change on each object inside of Unreal. The other thing worth mentioning, this place actors panel over here might not be here. It might be, it kind of floats around just depending. If I want it back, let me, let me close this. If I hit the X button, you can go to your window and you can find the place actors panel. Whether or not you even want it is kind of up to you because inside of Unreal 5, we have a little drop down menu over here. So let me, let me close this first. If we click the drop down menu. It's asking what kind of object do we want to create? And we can see all these options for us over here. These are very similar to our place actors menu. So they're kind of putting this underneath a little drop down menu instead of having something clogging up our viewport, which is kind of nice. But if you want it back, you can always go to window place actors and you can get it back. Um, just a different way to view that. If you are placing a lot of actors, maybe it's easier for you to have this open and drag and drop. I don't know whether or not you keep it it's up to you, but I'm going to close mine out. We can always get it back. So now we can go down here. Uh, this is called the content browser. This is all of our assets inside of our project folder. Now, specifically, we have this folder called content, right? Content browser, content folder. If we were to right click, we can go to show and explore and you can see exactly where all your assets are on your machine, right? In this case, it's inside of my content browser. But if I back up one, this is my content folder inside of my project folder, right? This is my root project. There are other folders, don't worry about those. But if I ever wanted my entire project folder, including my content folder, you could come over here and this is my whole project folder. So that's kind of nice to know about. So inside of content, all of these things, if I jump back into Unreal, are in these folders over here. We can import more things, we can add them. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning that in Unreal, you usually want to import things specifically. If you try to drag and drop objects inside the folder and hope for it to recognize, it, it might, and in many cases it will, but it'll also cause some issues in some cases. So I don't recommend doing that. I just always recommend just importing if you need to, right click, import, and you can get your objects that way. And that way you build the references for where they come from. Anyways, this is your content browser. Sometimes this might be hidden. I want to show you this. You could potentially close this, right? Like I could close this. That's pretty common. Like if I want my objects, you may want this to pop up and then get this out of the way. I'm pressing control space to do that. Control space to hide it. If you want to keep it, you can always come up here and go to content browser and content browser one, right? You may need, want multiples in different folders to keep those open, but a really handy hotkey that I use a lot is control space. Sometimes I'm buried in menus and I want something from the content folder. So you press control space, you navigate, you get the thing you want. And when you drag it in, I think it goes back away. But the reason it's staying is because I you know, have my window docked here. That's fine. And then you have all your assets in here. You can always drag something into the scene, uh, just drag and drop. I'm going to delete it back out because I don't know what the scene is, but uh, just for demo purposes, anything inside of your project folder is inside of your content folder and you can you know, do other things, right? Like you can favorite objects and create new objects with add, or you can do whatever, right? Anyways, that's kind of the basics. At this point, I just recommend getting used to moving around, hold down right mouse button and move around, use your first person shooter controls, WASD and Q and E, uh, learn a few hotkeys, right? F is pretty useful. Use that one a lot. Undo, obviously, is another good one. Uh, Control Z. And the last thing I'll talk about is object movement. So if I just want to move objects around and I have something like a floor, we can select it and we can use a manipulator if we want. If we can press space bar to toggle which manipulator we want, or we can press W, E, and R. W is for movement, movement up and down, left and right. E is for rotation. And remember, 
This is going to be looking at the, the grid snapping settings up here. So if you want to change the degree increments or you want to turn off snapping, which I don't usually recommend, uh, you can do that. You can leave snapping on and just change it to a, a really low degree if you want. And that's fine. You can find all the settings up there in whatever viewport you're in. So that's E for rotations. And then finally R for scale. So that's how you can manipulate objects inside of your scene. Remember, if you add objects inside of your world, this is the visualization of your world, which is, you know, visualized over here in the outliner outliner. The other thing that I think worth mentioning, because it's something that I use somewhat often is the project settings. You go to edit project settings. You come over here. Uh, a lot of times you may be adding inputs. For example, you might come down to inputs and add some new action maps in here. And then we can call these from code. You might be doing some other things in here. You know, maps and modes is another common one. You can set up your starting map or you can set up your, you know, what default map you want. Anyways, there's a lot of things, as you can see, that you can set up inside of your project settings. So be aware of that. But that's another uh, window that I wanted to briefly talk about. I think the last one is play mode. This, uh, you know, is not going to do anything special because there's nothing in the scene. Oh, I guess there is a character. All right, that's cool. You know, when you hit the play button, it'll jump into the game and show you. If you hit play mode, your project may not do what mine just did. Um, that's fine. Play mode just show allows you to test your uh, current version of your game. Um, and there are different types of play modes. You can play it from the viewport. You can play it from editor. You can simulate like a standalone game. You can play it, but I want to see it inside the viewport. That's another thing you can do, which is kind of handy. I'm going to put it back to selected viewport. I think that's fine. Whoa, that's crazy. Anyways, I, I think that's about it. The main things that we wanted to mention that we talked about was the uh, world viewport over here, which is your visualization of the world and the objects in your scene. So you can select it, move them around. We talked about your outliner. So the list view of all the objects in your scene over here. We talked about the details panel, which is how you can change attributes related to whatever you have selected, right? You can change your color or whatever, right? This is my light. It'll change depending on what object you have selected. We talked about our content browser, which is where all of our project assets are and where we can find them and where we can find them, right? If we show an explorer where, where we can find them on our machine. We also talked about, you know, how to show and hide that control space, if you like, or you can dock it just like I have here. We talked about the place actors panel over here where you know, we can do this little drop down and drag things in, or if you want to dock it, uh, which is kind of the Unreal 4 way. You can come down here and you can place actors and keep that panel open if you like. I also talked about how to manipulate objects. So what if I want to move objects in my scene, right? W is uh, translate, E is rotate, and R is scale. And we talked about the project settings, edit project settings for here and how there's a lot of extra options, including input and things over there um, if you want that. So the reason that I wanted to make this video was just, I think some of you might be a little intimidated if you're opening up Unreal for the first time. And a lot of tutorials might show you how to do something cool inside of Unreal, but may not show you just kind of the layout of the land, right? Like, what is this viewport? What is this related to? What exactly is the outliner? Where is my content folder inside of my project? I just want to show you the, the real basics of how you can get around, start playing around. And at this point, if you go through tutorials, they'll say something like create a blueprint inside of your content browser. And just for you to know what, what that means, what hotkeys are using on a basic level. But yeah, hopefully this helps you out. I know this is really beginnery, but I really wanted to make this video for some people who are opening Unreal for the first time, just get a little bit of an idea of uh, what's, what's happening inside this little uh, piece of software that we call Unreal.